Let's see. I wonder if we're live. Are we live? Let me know if we are. Let me know if we are. We are. I think we are. Yes, we are. Are we? I think we are. I think we are. Yes. Okay, thanks Joseph and uh, Alan and Timothy and Rockaway Siren for confirming. Welcome to a surprisingly cool and very windy morning here in Tokyo. It's currently, let's see, 9 degrees and strong wind warning. So I have my external mic today. Uh, good, I think we will need that. Uh, so today, yeah, I'm planning to go on a little photo walk. Uh, what does that mean? It means that I want to walk as usual, but I will be snapping a little bit more photos than usual. And as soon as this walk is over, I will uh, share the photos with you. Um, probably going forward, I will make the photo sharing kind of exclusive to my Patreon supporters. But for today, since this is a bit of a test run, I will also share them here on YouTube via, um, what's it called? The, yeah, the community posts. So I will share a gallery with uh, today's uh, snapshots. Uh, but that will come later. First, let's start walking. So of course, those of you who are familiar with my channel should recognize this place. I'm of course in Sangenjaya. And I'm planning to walk from here to Shibuya, uh, which is a nice little walk that will take, take me through a variety of different kind of neighborhoods and sceneries. It's early morning, so as you can see, most shops are closed at this time of the day. Um, but um, I think as we, as it gets a little bit later, more and more shops will be open and uh, maybe the streets will become a little bit more lively as well. McDonald's is always open though. Uh, so yeah, let's start by heading down this little alley which is a great photo spot at night but not as interesting in the daytime if you ask me but still I guess I will snap a few shots so I'm shooting with my little Rico GR which is a camera that has been me on wow the wind is really strong um, this camera has been me been with me for a couple of years now uh, and my regular viewers should be quite familiar with it it's a great little camera, but I don't really use it that much in my private life, to be honest. I have too many cameras to choose from, but I really like using this while I'm streaming because it's so small and it has like very nice controls. Uh, for, so it's easy to handhold with just using, using just one hand. So that makes it really nice to use on my, uh, doing my live streams. Not as interesting light this way. <laughs> but yeah, it's, it's very, very compact. And that's why this camera is quite popular, especially among street photographers. It's compact, but it still has like good sensor, good lens, um, a 28 millimeter equivalent lens and a APS-C sized sensor. So for being so small, that's pretty good. I kind of like the light shining through this tree. And let's see, I have like my mic hidden under the jacket. Let me know if you start hearing like weird sounds like from my jacket scratching against the mic or something like that. Or if my voice starts sounding muffled, I will find out a better way to attach it. But it's really so windy right now. so. I, I don't think even with the windshield that won't be enough if the if the mic is exposed to to um, to the air. <laughs> but I hope you can hear me well. Oh, it's really really like yesterday and two days ago, especially two days ago, like two days ago Saturday was like the first day of the year when I went outside without the jacket and it really felt like, 
oh, summer will be here soon. Like, finally, it's so warm. It felt like Swedish summer. Uh, it was super comfortable. But then, yeah, today, now it's winter again, for sure. I'm almost like, my hands, can you see? They're kind of like really red and dry and almost wish I were, was wearing gloves because of this cold air. Thank you, Back Days, for confirming that my voice sounds all right. Yeah, without any mic, it would be impossible to stream to, with in this kind of weather. So yeah, it's beautiful for sure, blue sky and all that, but it's cold and super windy. Actually, let me check the wind forecast. Uh, yeah it says moderate but yeah it is pretty strong it's gonna, and it's gonna get even worse this afternoon slightly worse uh, but yeah otherwise it's 11 degrees gonna go up a little bit and sunny all day so that's nice i guess uh, justin asked do you think the year is going by way too fast Ah, uh, I don't know, like, ever since becoming a dad, I feel that time has, the speed of time has increased by a lot. But I uh, can't say that it's more like this year than last year, for example. I like this little coffee shop here. But it's too early for a coffee break. But actually, this shop has a much nicer, typical Japanese facade. Nice light, light and shadow as well. Oh, really? Yeah, sorry. Yes. Did you super chat? Sorry. Yes, I was a little bit focused on getting the tech right in the beginning. Thank you so much. Morning coffee. Yes. And in Tokyo next week. Wonderful. Wonderful. Let's see if we can and meet up for coffee, IRL them, when you're here. So let me think, I'll probably continue a little bit further down this street and then make a right turn. Or no, why not? Let's let's go walk down this street. This is also quite nice. This is a little short and guy here as well. When do you move your clock ahead of one hour? Uh, we don't. Japan has no daylight savings time. So uh, yeah, I kind of wish they they did because all year round it gets dark pretty e pretty early. Uh, and also like sunrise is pretty early as well most of the year so I think I think it would be a very huge savings in energy if they could adjust it a little bit and make better use of the daylight huh. this is cool I like this car with all the pipes and whatnot Tokyo 7. Some nice little entrance and sign as well. I love these kind of traditional old school fruit fruit rest fruit shops. Hasn't changed much in the last 50 years or so. They're very charming. I love this sign here with, the, with all the fruits. Yeah, Ray is not here. This is a cute little corner. I love, I love all these plants 
that they put out. It's kind of, it's very charming. Like you see it so often here in Tokyo, like people really want to kind of brighten up or put a little bit of greenery in the middle of all this, all this uh, super urban, super dense urban city. But still a lot of people try to put out some plants wherever they can. Let's see. This wind is really awful. So I'm basically walking towards the east now, towards Shibuya. Oh wow, is this a shrine in here? Or is this someone's home? It's probably a home. It looks like <laughs> the entrance looks like a jungle. That's pretty neat. Like a secret forested path. And I like these pink flowers too. They're nice. I'm walking towards the east. Shibuya is three stops away by train from Sangenjaya. Uh, so not super close, but I think I think it will take about an hour to get there, depending on how many detours I do. But uh, <laughs> I find it funny how in Japan they even the smallest little unused space can qualify as a park. Like for example, this little corner which is funny it's called like frog square park Kairu Hiroba corner but yeah to me this is not I, I would not call this a park but in Japan it is however I do like those hangers and the shadows that they're making and it's extra funny with the frog below so that was worthy of a little snapshot like super excited about this walk to be honest like I, when I was looking out the window it looked like oh finally like nice blue blue sky and I have some time to do a stream I was getting super excited but then once I started this this cold wind is actually kind of killing my motivation somewhat But yeah, it is what it is. And at least the wind shouldn't be causing too much issues for the photos. Look, cute little tree here. This is not a cherry blossom tree. One thing that I really like about Tokyo is that you find these these pathways so-called ryokudo or like greenway all over the city they're usually like old rivers that have been like co covered up and turned into uh, pedestrian friendly streets but yeah they make a very well needed break in otherwise very dense urban city let's see what are you guys saying uh, what's SPD? Oh, in this, this corner. I've shot this place before. Maybe not on a live stream, but... for a moment I want the person to pass oh, Yenny thank you thank you for the coffee money okay just because of that no one wants to pass <laughs> No. 
can't camp here forever when I'm streaming. <laughs> oh, but okay, there looks like there's some people inbound, so let's let's go back and capture this scene with someone passing. That's nice. St. Patrick's Day. Ah, okay. Do you think it could look better if some of the rivers could be uncovered? Yeah. I'm sure that would look nice, but then we would also lose some of the most pleasant uh, like pedestrian only streets in the city so I don't know and usually they're so narrow so it would be difficult to have both the river and uh, uh, like some walking path but yeah I mean it's always nice to see water well I wonder what's happening here Looks like some of cables are disconnected for some reason. Don't see that very often. Is it lunchtime yet? No, not yet. It just it's ten o'clock. I was kind of debating this morning if I should start another train line walk uh, since I just finished the uh, Yamanote line last week but we are really at the uh, like the busy busiest season of the year for my photography business is starting very soon like in the coming days so I think during that I'll just stream wherever whenever I can would be a bit too time consuming to to do another ta ta uh, train line walk since it takes so much time to get to and from the starting points of those but as soon as busy season is over meaning mid-april i hope to do another train line walk I need to find a kayak for tea yeah that would be nice that would be nice Are you guys hearing the wind noise at all, by the way? Like, I constantly feel like I'm about to blow away and I'm super worried about the phone and how stable it is here on the gimbal. But, uh, yeah, I hope the mic is doing a good job. Looks like very residential area. Yeah, I mean, not, not super mega expensive around here, but definitely it's, uh, it's, a, it's a popular side of town since we're so close to Shibuya and yeah, also like Shinjuku is not too far away from here. Nakameguro is within walking distance from here. So yeah, it's, it's not cheap, but it's not like one of those kind of luxury high-end residential areas, I wouldn't say. We can hear a bit of wind noise, okay. The wind noise is the only thing I hear. <laughs> That's how bad it is. But now we have a few seconds of calm. Oh, I kind of like this. I like these old Japanese buildings and these clean lines and patterns and then that little mini satellite TV dish was kind of a nice little detail as well. <coughs> yeah, you wouldn't hear me at all without the mic. Ah, I see some cherry blossom trees. Or 
are some. I don't see some cherry blossom trees. I see one cherry blossom tree. Next to the entrance to this little cute shrine here. I think, yeah. This is also one of the early blooming kinds though. Let's head inside. I kind of like the light and the shadows on those stairs over there. Uh, thank you, Garfield. Get some cookies for your coffee. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Cherry blossoms. Oh, they haven't really started blooming in Japan yet though. There's just a few like early blooming kinds that are in bloom now. But the actual, like the main cherry blossom season hasn't really started yet. I think we're still a few, probably about a, a week away. Maybe a week and a half for peak cherry blossoms. There are so many kinds of cherry blossom trees, you know, you can see even in January, you can see blooming cherry blossom trees pretty close to Tokyo, but uh, yeah, that's a very special kind that blooms that early. Do you have a sh favorite shrine? Asked Justin. I, oh, oh, damn it. I was too slow there with the camera. I wanted to capture, would have been a nice shot if I could have captured the cat passing here. Um, I think actually one of my favorite shrines in Tokyo is uh, Nezu Shrine, Nezu Jinja. It's a very beautiful place and it's kind of, yeah, first of all I have some good memories from there but it's also a very, very beautiful place. It has like lots of these long long line of these red tori gates. It's a great place for photo shoots and it's also not too clean. Like, I, I like when shrines looks like they've been through a lot. Like, if they're all brand new and, like, fresh paint. I mean, that's beautiful too, but I kind of prefer when they, when they have a bit of character. Yeah, I think that cat was on its way to a very important date. <laughs> this is... Is this actually a public... I think it is, yeah. Tiny, tiny little public toilet. Next to this relatively sad playground. I would give this a sadness rating of, well, three out of five. I mean, it has a bit of greenery around. It's on a quiet street. It's not too bad, actually, but I don't know. Looks like maybe it could, it, it's time to upgrade it a little bit, replace it with some new, newer toys. There's another cherry blossom tree. Nice, nice. How to move to this city? Um, get a job. <laughs> And there's a big need for people who can come here and work. So, if you have a skill that's in demand, it shouldn't be too hard. Uh, if not, I would recommend either educating yourself or come up with a good business idea and start a business. Uh, sometimes we sometime please take us to that shrine. I've been there on a few walks but it's it's quite a long time ago. Oh I like this tree with the very very pink almost purple flowers here in the corner. Um, I've been there on, on uh, walks on my channel but it's been a while so yeah it would be nice to go there again sometime soon. Do I ever see skateboarders in Tokyo? Not that often no. It happens. There's a few 
a few specific spots where where I see them. Um, for example, Miyashita Park in Shibuya and uh, also Setagaya Koen, Setagaya Park, which is close to where we are now. And also on some kind of, some few places near Futaku Tamagawa, like under the bridges, we can see skateboarders from time to time. But basically this city is not very skateboarder friendly. Like you see so many places where there's signs specifically saying that no skateboarding here. Any shrine, temple, park or place I've never been to but desired to go. Uh, there's a few parks in the eastern and northeastern part of Tokyo. I don't remember the name, but I think that it's like the biggest park in Tokyo actually is somewhere in the far northeast. I haven't been to it yet. So I'd like to go there. Do you ever see maids in Tokyo? Yeah, I was in Akihabara the other day. You always see them there, but basically nowhere else. Uh, I'm noticing that this wind is actually making me a bit kind of stressed. I was kind of like hoping that it would be a very chill, slow, relaxed walk, snapping tons of photos. But because of this weather, I feel like I'm, I'm walking pretty fast and I kind of want to get it over with. Uh -huh. Sorry about that, but... Okay, here's something for sale. Uh, it's a newly built house, uh, 120 square meters, and it's 134 million yen. So, slightly less than a million US dollars. Um, for a house, a detached house here, and a pretty big one. That's like, yeah, bigger than average size of houses in Tokyo. But that, that's pretty steep. That's pretty steep. But probably, yeah, the fact that it's newly built uh, plays a part in that. Let's cross here. There's not much traffic anyway. Coffee break would probably improve the mood. Yeah, I think so. Especially if I could find a nice little... Oh, look, you have these two introverts bench. Person one and person two. Person two can sit there and observe the back of person one. Because, you know, it's even designed so that they should not face each other. If you're a little bit more outgoing, maybe you can kind of sit here instead. But uh, yeah, this is... Actually, I want to snap a photo of this. This is so hilarious. We see all these seats for introverts quite often on, on our walks here in Tokyo. And they always, always make me giggle. Uh, yes, Michael Samira, that included uh, the land. Usually when you buy a house in Tokyo, it's, it's usually also with the land. There are some cases where the land is like rent it out uh, but I think the laws regarding that has actually changed so it's not very common these days but there are still a few landowners uh, maybe with like um, contracts that were made before the the law was changed so it's still it's still a thing Yeah, let's see if we can find a little place for a coffee break. Oh, look, this white bird looks a little bit unusual in a, at a place like this.
Welcome to Bird Photography Explorer. How close I can get without scaring this guy away. Hey, look at me, buddy. Did I manage to get something? I think I did. I think I did. What's the most important setting on your camera when roaming like this? Um, the most important setting, basically I keep it on all auto, except that I set, so I set a minimum shutter speed. Since I'm just holding it with one hand, it's not that stable. So I want pretty fast shutter speeds. It's not a problem on a day like today because it's so sunny and bright. So, that's not an issue but if i would do this more like in the evening yeah i don't want the the shutter speed to be too uh too slow because then i wouldn't be able to handhold and get a sharp photo other than that yeah it's just all auto and also this camera has a pretty wide lens which also makes the risk of camera shake uh, much smaller and it's stabilized so yeah it's a perfect camera for this Do you often take multiple photos of the same thing? Oh, always, always. I never only take one photo, at least always two, but usually more than that. I always overshoot a lot, and uh, but also like to, to make sure that I get one that's sharp and also like just to kind of, as a kind of insurance. Uh, if I'm taking photos of people, and never know if they're gonna like blink so then I take a lot so yeah I, I generally shoot quite a lot late for Ume. Yeah, definitely, like before digital cameras, I shot in a very different way. I'm kind of glad that I started like before the digital camera age. When I started photography, it was still like digital cameras were too expensive to, to be used by anyone except the top professionals. But I think I got my first digital, my first DSLR probably around the year 2000. No, a little bit later, 2002 maybe. Canon released a camera that was relatively affordable. It was still like maybe $3,000 uh, equivalent. 
but which was a lot for like 20 year old me but um, compared to before where you would have to pay at least three times as much that was quite affordable do i use a polarized lens no i don't i don't i never use polarizing filter actually i don't feel that it's that important anymore it was more like when back in the film days um, you maybe needed it to oh this is nice i like the facade of this house um yeah no i, I never really felt the need for it someone asked what kind of fish those were koi carps very common fish here in japan you see them in all the ponds at shrines and and uh, yeah also small rivers and streams canals like this how do you store all your photos flash drive yeah i have like kind of three layers of storage i would say so first when i shoot uh, i just copy them to my computer uh, and that's where they usually are when i edit them and then i once i need more space on the internal drive i move Re relatively recent photos but still not like super new i move them to an external ssd i have a two terabyte one a small compact little thing which i always carry together with the computer and then at home i have uh, some I have four eight terabyte hard drives uh, in an external enclosure that I use for more like long-term backup, which has like yeah, all the photos from the last, I think it's like probably close to 10 years of photos on those drives. And I also back it up to Google Photos. I should actually have a second setup of spinning hard drives and have a copy, uh, which I don't. So if any of those hard drives dies, that's actually a pretty big loss for me. Um, but that's something I try not to think about. But I kind of feel like, you know, I don't have anything super mega important and at least i will have i will still have the jpegs uh, which have been backed up to google google photos uh -huh. so but yeah of course ideally i should really make sure to preserve all the raw files as well ah unagi unagi is good yeah i like unagi a lot Usually quite expensive here. Don't, don't you dare step on the plants. How long do you hold on to photos? Is there a time once a month that you clean house? Oh, I, I don't, I don't clean. <laughs> no, I save everything. So. You know, from this little walk I'm taking now, it's going to be another, maybe another gigabyte or so of permanent storage uh, required. However, I, yeah, and when I do like my professional photo shoots, I mean, I, I shoot, I can shoot thousands of photos in one day. I actually had, I did a tour two days ago, uh, a half day tour was booked to to show some some guys around um, Tokyo and uh, yeah I probably shot like 2,000 photos with my 48 megapixel camera or 46 megapixel or whatever it is so yeah 
that's like maybe 30, 40 gigabytes. So the internal storage on my on my laptop that's that's constantly like I'm always low low on internal storage. So down there is Meguro River. As you can see, these are all cherry blossom trees. This is the most one of the most famous cherry blossom sceneries in Tokyo over there, but still not a single flower in bloom. I'll continue up here for a little while and then make a turn into quieter streets again and uh, as I make my way to Shibuya. Uh, is it spring now? Well, it was definitely, it felt like spring two days ago, but today it feels like winter has come back. It's been up and down so much this, this year, the weather, the temperatures. It's been like over 20 degrees several times and then it dropped back down to like three five degrees the next day it's it's uh, it's quite unusual that it's this flaky uh, from my experience yeah yeah of course yeah of course my my hard drives are are uh, a business expense to get a NAS with RAID, yeah, I guess I should. I guess I should. That's what I've been. That's what I know that I should be. That I should get, but that's also like a, seems like a bit of a pain to set it all up, and I'm just kind of holding it off. I think we want to walk up here. Oh, here they're building another fancy apartment building. And here I do want to cross. Getting close to 200 viewers, great. Thanks everyone for joining me on this very, very windy and surprisingly cold morning here in, in Tokyo. I remember I walked these stairs before on a live stream. I think that was at night. Tokyo as a disabled person it just wouldn't work oh, there's plenty of disabled persons living in Tokyo they exist here in Japan too uh, so it's not impossible oh like nice this kindergarten has a cherry blossom tree in bloom very nice big outdoor space for the kids. Just take a little look at the map here. Mm. 
Okay. There's actually a, there's a good looking cafe not too far from where I am, but they aren't open yet, says Google. <laughs> you think that's that would be tough for the little children to walk up those stairs? I don't know. I'm the kind of person who rather see it as a good way to get some forced exercise. I mean, during basically all my childhood, we lived on the fourth floor in a house without an elevator. So, and I'm kind of grateful for that because it made me very comfortable to walk and walk up and down stairs. Now we live on the 12th floor, which is a little bit too high. So I don't really walk the stairs up to our apartment now, but I would if we lived a few floors down, I think. Feels a little bit like we might hit a dead end here. I'm kind of walking in a circle. Yeah. Okay. Let's see. So I can just sneak through this pathway that I just photographed. Here's also an empty plot of land and then many layers of buildings behind it. Then we should be able... Oh, look, there's Shibuya Sky over there in the distance. That's a good sign that we're on the right track. And we just passed 200 viewers. Great. Thanks everybody for tuning in. Thanks for joining me. And in case you, yeah, <laughs> since you didn't join from the start. So the point of today's video is that I'm snapping a lot of photos as I'm walking. And then as soon as I'm done with this live stream, I will sit down somewhere and quickly edit them and upload to our online gallery and uh, share with you. So yeah, just keep an eye on the community tab in YouTube or on Patreon, of course, if you are a Patreon supporter of mine, where you will find the link as soon as the photos are ready. Hello, hello to you. Does this have a more plus day? Not one plus. It's a more plus reflection reveal.
Ooh, I kind of like this green color here. Green color and green greenery. This is interesting too, like this one family home up there. Hmm. Definitely see a lot of creative land use here in Tokyo. I think we should be approaching Shinsen Station. Is there a crossing over here? I think so. Hope so. Oh yeah, is this the same house as we saw up there? Really like probably just 10 centimeters from the from the wall of this orange house that's pretty cool wonder if there's an earthquake if they like slam against each other was that the not open yet fancy coffee shop no i don't think so i don't think so But I think once we get closer to Shinsen, there should be some coffee shops around. At least there's lots of restaurants and bars there. Check the map again, actually. Oh yeah, that fancy coffee shop is actually here. The one that's not open. And look here is a Lucky Alexander China. It's a gyoza vending machine. Gyoza wine ramen. Sounds quite tempting. But we actually had gyoza for dinner last night at home. Argentina grill. Ooh, that's a cool door handle. And the coffee place was where is it? What's this place? Ah, yeah, this one. Ania Cafe. The room. Looks quite nice. But, yeah, sadly, they won't open until 11.30, so another hour from now. So let's see, I think would walking down this way make any sense? Uh, not really, no. Okay. I should walk down this way. And then... Ah, oh, but here's also, here's, we're coming to an open coffee shop soon. green building 
Nice. Did I just get another super chat? Thank you, James. Yes, put this towards the coffee. Yeah. Oh, it's gonna be a very, sounds like I'm gonna buy a very expensive coffee. Thank you. Mm. What shampoo and conditioner do you use to tame that curly beast in your head? Um, so actually I'm, a person who belongs to the no shampoo camp I generally believe that my my hair is taking better care of itself by itself than uh, me adding a bunch of uh, chemicals to it so I usually wash my hair like with with shampoo maybe once a week I do that I have to admit so I'm not super hardcore about it but um, Generally, yeah, my, I feel that my hair looks and feels the best about two to three days after washing it with shampoo. But in order to not gross out my wife completely, I do wash it with, with shampoo occasionally because she is a firm believer in the opposite. She washes her hair, hair every day. So I just, I do basically just rinse it with water every day, but uh, shampoo once a week. I don't know. Does it look, does it look disgusting to you? It's probably about five days since my last shampoo wash. Yeah. It's a bit frizzy, yeah. Maybe. It doesn't look greasy. Yeah, my hair doesn't really get greasy. It doesn't. The thing is, when I wash my hair with shampoo and conditioner, it gets like very, very fluffy. And I don't like that. Uh, when it's been a day or two, it kind of calms down a bit more and it has more structure to it and easier to control, which I enjoy. But yeah, when I, when I wash it with shampoo, I always use conditioner afterwards. Fluffy like a poodle. <laughs> yeah. I think it looked like as if there's a coffee shop around here. A little bit further down, okay. Oh, 
Oh, this is cute. So, aha, uh -huh. it's a dentist actually. I thought it was a hairdresser or something, but no, it was it's a dentist. Any shampoo, conditioner brands that you'd recommend? No, not really. My wife buys some fancy organic stuff and just use whatever she buys. She's very peculiar about those things. Let's cross here while we still can. And let me check the map again. Okay. You can see we walk up here one block. And then to the right. We just passed one hour. One hour since I started this walk in uh, Sangenjaya, and we're very close to Shinsan, Shinsan Station, and from there it's not far to the busy streets of Shibuya, where I will end today's walk. So I think we have another 15 minutes to half an hour. So you're saying your hair smells like strawberries. Sorry, I don't understand the joke. <laughs> no, why? I, my wife's hair doesn't smell like strawberries. It smells nice, but not strawberries. Let me check the map again here. Yes, this is the street I want to go down. Perfect. Do I green green tea much? Uh, no, I'm not so fond of green tea. Uh, drink it maybe I don't know like usually maybe when I eat sushi then you usually get served some green tea but that's about the only time never drink it at home never order it out I only drink it like when someone puts it in front of my face basically I mean I don't dislike it I just think that there are plenty of nicer things to drink. Oh, there's an owl cafe here. I didn't know that. 1500 yen, 30 minutes. It's quite expensive. see I don't think fruity shampoos are very common here in Japan actually that's why the joke was beyond me
Ooh, it's a little bit too much in the shade here. Oh, here's a little coffee, coffee uh, roastery. But I think I will save the coffee until after the stream because as soon as I'm done with the stream, I need to sit down somewhere and uh, edit these photos. So maybe no coffee break today. Sorry to disappoint. <laughs> This street is very nice at night. There's a lot of cool restaurants and bars around here. In the daytime, it's... It's a bit different. But I, I like all these signs by the sea. Ah, oh, yeah, here's the, the sweets themed love hotel. I'm not sure if I've passed here on a stream before, but I think this place got a bit of a, yeah, got plenty of uh, people on YouTube and social media commenting about this place. Um, so this area actually, we, we're in the kind of shady part of Shibuya. There's a few blocks away, there's an area called Love Hotel Hill, uh, where there's like lots and lots of love hotels next to each other. Shinjuku over there, but I'm heading up to Shibuya. up for Hawaiian pizza. Mmm, that would be nice. Haven't had one of those in a long time. Wonder if they're common in Japan. I don't think so. Have I ever tried staying a couple of nights in a love hotel? I've stayed in love hotels, but uh, I prefer to not get into the details. So we're almost down at Shibuya Crossing actually. It's just a few streets down here. This is Dogenzaka, one of the kind of uh, main streets that runs down to Shibuya, Shibuya Crossing.
the cutters are already out. Maybe they have to start early to avoid Nintendo's lawyers. So yeah, up here is the Love Hotel area. Maruyama Cho is the official name of that neighborhood. I have to say that I'm a little bit disappointed in terms of the photo ops during today's walk. I don't feel like I got that many share-worthy photos, but we'll see, we'll see. I basically always shoot more or less from the hip and uh, when, I, when I do like photo walks like this. We'll see, maybe there's something good in there. I've snapped quite a lot of photos though, probably well over a hundred at least, but yeah, I don't think that there's any, that I managed to grab any masterpieces today. Massive construction going on here as well very noisy and dusty. Yeah, yeah, there will definitely be more photo walks. Actually, I recently kind of rediscovered my love for street photography. So that's a good thing. Um, there will definitely, I've been just like shooting way more than usual in the last couple of weeks just privately uh, but uh, that will definitely be reflected here on YouTube soon as well also the thing for me like coming to Shibuya is I just feel that I just feel that I've shot everything here so much already like I mean this place used to be one of my favorite places to come for for photos but I don't know now it's just after 15 years of living here I guess I've just been here too much uh, so these days I find I, I'm much more inspired when I'm walking in more like local or rural areas or in the far suburbs rather than those main districts in central Tokyo. Is Mini still using her camera? Yes, yes, she is. She had it with her to the park uh, yesterday actually. She's still using it a lot. This walk is very nice to you. Oh, thank you, Garfield. I'm glad to hear that. And I think it's nicer for you than for me because I've been dealing with this wind so much. But here it's actually not that bad. It was awful in the beginning of the walk. But yeah, not so bad right now. Oh, we're here at the 
the world's biggest crossing. It's quite busy, surprisingly busy for being so early. Well, 11, I guess. This is when most shops are opening, so that's why there's plenty of people. a lot for joining me today and uh, I'll be walking with you again soon um, not super soon but probably maybe Thursday or so um, have a few other things to do in the coming days oh damn it I missed that guy that was cute the old man with the with the dog in the basket of his bicycle I will just cross here and then wave goodbye to you. Time to move to Okinawa. Yeah, I wish. I wish. it for today thanks so much for watching and uh, I'll post the photos as soon as I get a chance so keep an eye out on patreon or in the community tab and uh, yeah thanks so much and I'll see you again soon bye bye hey do a fit is a not matane cheese